My name is Manish Gupta and in this video I'm going to talk about backpack language models. It's an interesting name. Uh, this paper won the outstanding paper award at ACL 2023. So let's get started. What are backpack LMs, right? So what you see here is a typical transformer language model. So, you know, uh, it basically takes uh, these words, the T is and predicts the next word hot. Right? And it does so uh, using the self attention mechanism, the query key value kind of things, and then self attention, QK transpose, softmax over that, multiply by the value vector. Right? Backpack LMs are what are depicted here. And let's try to understand what this all means. In fact, backpack LMs are a new neural architecture uh, with not too much of a variation uh, that marry the strong modeling performance with an interface for interpretability and control. So, you know, in the, they, so basically they um, allow for good modeling performance as we'll see in the next two slides and also allow for nice interpretability, which typical transformers don't allow and also control language generation. Right? Uh, they actually learn, they are their contextual in nature. So they actually learn multiple non-contextual sense vectors for each word and then represent a word in a sequence as a context dependent non-negative linear combination. So I'll sort of explain what this means, but the broad idea is that they can actually learn sense vectors for every word, and then they can make use of the right sense vector in the current context. That's in simple words, okay? Um, so let's basically look at how these, uh, um, you know, backpack LMs work. These formulae are super simple if you understand the transformers major formulae, okay? So what you do in the beginning is to essentially take the words X and then you multiply it with a learnable weight matrix E so as to get like a you know embedding representation, a further um, projected embedding representation of X and then apply a feed forward uh, layer on top of it. That gives you sense representation CX. So you call these uh, C as sense representations and how many representations do you learn per uh, word? Well, uh, you can learn as many as you like. Uh, you know, you can learn a K number of representations per word. In their case, they learn up to 16 uh, sense representations for every word. So that is how you essentially get like L, you know, uh, so L equal to one to K different sense representations. Now you also take those words. Of course, if there are n words in the input sequence, you take those words one by one and then you pass them through the transformer. So, you know, through uh, different layers of the transformer and essentially that gives you uh, the hidden representation from the transformer. Now you take this hidden representation and you also have a learnable matrix K and Q, which is, uh, which is dependent on the particular sense L, right? So essentially, of course, you do it for each sense L equal to one to K, where as I mentioned, you know, they have fixed K equal to 16, but you can learn as many senses as you like. So, so for each of those senses, you essentially have these matrices K and Q, uh, and you essentially also have this H, right? Uh, the hidden representation coming from a typical transformer, and that gives you alpha L. So this is basically the weight that you will provide to each of those, uh, uh, you know, attention weight in some ways it, uh, that you'll provide to each of those senses. Now, uh, this alpha L is essentially what is used um, to combine with the sense representation, sense vectors for that particular sense L for a particular word X uh, from one to N. And, uh, uh, you know, thus essentially when you get a output representation for a particular uh, word, the output representation is essentially obtained um, as a context dependent non negative linear combination of sense vectors. And the linear combination here is expressed using alphas, right? So, how do you get those alphas? Well, you get those alphas, uh, you know, depending on K and Q, which are sense, uh, sense uh, uh, sensitive. So, in the sense, uh, a matrix per sense. So, uh, matrix K per sense and matrix Q per sense. Um, that gives you alphas, right? So that's that. Now, um, so rather than using the V vector or the values, you essentially use the sense representation C that you had learned right there. Okay. Now, of course, once you get the O, uh, you take these O's and you multiply by the output embedding matrix so as to uh, so as to essentially predict the next word, predict the next word XJ. Okay. Notice that the input embedding matrix E and the output embedding matrix E are both tied to each other. That is why we, you know, you see the same character E being used here. Okay. So in fact, uh, you know, what they also show in the paper is that uh, not just uh, this backpack model is of course a backpack language model, but then, you know, even continuous bag of word model where you essentially just take average over word, word to ve vectors is also a backpack. In fact, single layer self-attention is also a backpack, but uh, the particular backpack model that they propose called as the backpack language model follows these particular formulae for generation and training, right? 
Now, at the end of the train, so essentially, this is what is also represented here, right? So essentially, you take those, take those words, you learn multiple sense vectors out of every word, multiple sense vectors out of every word. Now, when a transformer has to generate the next word, of course, you take those words, apply multiple layers of transformers and so on. At the end, when you have this H, which is coming out right there, you essentially want to figure out uh, what percent, you know, how much of every sense you must use for uh, for coming up with a transform representation for every word. And, uh, you know, for every word, you essentially take a particular uh, sense and then, um, you know, take a particular sense and, and then also those coefficients. So the alphas that you obtain there, and that basically gives you O, which helps you decide the last, uh, you know, which helps you essentially compute uh, the overall next word to be predicted. Now, while doing this, of course, you learn sense vectors per word, and this is how the sense vectors look like. So, of course, you can actually look at sense vector, um, so 12 for every word. So, you could look at sense vector 12 for tasty, 12 for quickly, 12 for apple, 12 for believe, right? So, and what you observe is that there is relationship between the same index of the sense vector for every across every word, right? So, for example, here, uh, if you look at tasty, tasty, tasty culinary, tasty, tasted, tasty is delicious, and so on, they seem like uh, you know synonym, generic synonyms, okay? But if you look at uh, sense uh, three, for example, it is next word piece sense. So, for example, pizza cutter, pizza tracker, and so on, or interest rate, or the slightest, the same, and so on. So, you know, words which occur next to each other. Now. Backpack, uh, so, so you, you can also have the uh, verb object senses. So for example, build bridges or attest worthiness or um, you know, a, a maintaining importance or finer, uh, appreciate finer details or appreciate nuances and so on. Okay. These are also proper noun sense uh, associations. For example, Apple with Mac OS X or Mac OS or Obama uh, with the Barack or Messi with Argentina and so on. So this is how good, good visualization can be made. Uh, you know, uh, the way people created this visualization is to take these sense vectors CX for a particular sense. Uh, of course, for a particular word X, for a particular word X, you take a sense vectors uh, and then you project them back. Uh, you know, of course, the way you co computed them is using this, uh, using multiplying X with the embedding matrix. You project them back by multiplying pre multiplying by E transpose and then take nearest neighbors um, so as to get uh, so as to get these words that you see here. Now the nice part, uh, so so we have understood how the sense, uh, how the backpack LM is trained. Uh, in fact, they train three different sizes of backpack LMs based, uh, you know, corresponding to three different transformer baselines. So their backpack LMs have uh, six layers, eight layers, and twelve layer of size, micro, mini, and uh, small, forty million, hundred million, and one seventy million parameters. Right? They use sixteen sense vectors, and uh, for all the models, and a max sequence length of five point two. Now. If you just look at the typical uh, quality of this model, you can of course judge the quality of the model by uh, computing, uh, uh, you know, by by taking similar words across different bench benchmark data sets and then checking what is the similarity uh, that the embeddings obtained using backpack LMs uh, showcase, right? So you can take Spearman co correlation between similar words and then uh, report the Spearman correlation. So what you observe is that this is the Spearman correlation values for classic models like word to back and uh, uh, glove. This is for GPT-based model. This is for uh, uh, transform model here, and then uh, for uh, backpack LMs here. And then this is of course a similarity using state-of-the-art model. So these state-of-the-art models are specifically tuned for those, so they will not compare with those. But if you compare with transformer, you observe that across these data sets, uh, in most of the data sets, uh, uh, you know some variant of these backpack LMs essentially gives you. Uh, better similarity between similar, be, better spirit and correlation between similar words, right? So this uh, sen, uh, sim 12 basically just means similarity based on this, uh, sense 12 or similarity based on sense 14 of the word or, you know, minimum similarity across various senses of the words. Now further, you know, if you compute the perplexity using these kinds of uh, uh, backpack models and compare them with transform models across different data sets, you observe that uh, backpack, kind, backpack kind of models give you lower similarity across different benchmarks. Um, in some of those cases, this uh, perplexity can be really low compared to the transformer based models. Okay. Now, what is the goodness? I mean, you know, this is great that yes, you have come up with a new sort of transform, a, a little modified architecture of transformers, but that is what is great about these models, right? So there are three interesting applications that they show of backpack LMs. So one is topic control generation. So can you basically take a topic which is represented as a bag of words B? And then try to come up with generations which are biased towards those topics. So you want to have, uh, you know, uh, generations which basically give more importance to those topics, right? So specifically, they experimented with 17 different topics, and uh, the way they generated, they came up with generations which are sort of uh, related to this topic, is by taking the words in the topic and then trying to 
uh, compute this. So remember, CXL is the sense uh, associated with those words. E transpose gives you those actual word embeddings from the perspective of that sense. And B transpose just tells you that, hey, I want to um, come up with the representation of the embedding which is similar or aligned toward these bias toward these bag of words B, right? So you sense you sort the sense vectors by this by this by this value, and then you use this to define a factor a score uh, delta which is essentially used to compute the OI, right? So essentially, of course, you were typically just using alphas and Cs, but then you have this, uh, uh, this delta now into the system, which basically represents the bias towards uh, uh, the topic that you want to control for, that you want to be exhibited in the generations. And what you observe are the results here. So essentially, blue one actually shows you the curve for the transformer. The red one shows you the curve for the backpack LM. What is shown on the um, uh, x-axis is the uh, average control success. So, uh, you know, the larger the value, the better. And on the y-axis, you see the MOV score, which is like a, a score of quality of the generated output. So both of them, the higher, the better. And what you see is that uh, the red colored curves, uh, which correspond to, um, um, you know, uh, which correspond to different scores of delta. So essentially, each of these markers correspond to different scores of delta. So with the delta equal to one, you essentially have an unmodified uh, backpack LM or an unmodified transformer, right? But with delta equal to, uh, you know, with, with, with lower values of, uh, uh, you know, uh, with, with the lower values of delta, uh, with higher values of delta, in fact, with higher values of delta, you can bias them more and more towards some topics, right? And leading to higher uh, average control success. So while doing so, of course, transformers can actually lead to really uh, good average control success, but while doing so, the mouse scores drop a lot with transformers, while the mouse scores do not drop a lot with uh, uh, with backpack alums, which is the nice T. So in the sense that you can actually bias uh, generations towards certain topics while uh, while maintaining the overall quality of the generated output. The second application with the use backpack models is to mitigate gender bias. And the third application is knowledge editing, as I'll talk in this uh, last slide in this video. Okay. So uh, they observed that in their model, sense number 10 actually associates with, uh, with bias. So that actually associates a whole bunch of these gendered profession nouns with the with the gen, with the stereotypical uh, pronouns. For example, it relates nurse with her and CEO with him. Right. So to mitigate the bias, the idea is to of course turn down sense ten while doing the computations in the backpack LM. Now that you have a control on which sense really denotes bias, just turn down that sense. Right. So you can turn it off by actually varying, uh, multiplying you know uh, the computation OI. Uh, with uh, with a score uh, between zero to one, where if you basically keep it as one, then you're not turning it down, but a number less than one will turn down sense number ten completely. Right? And then, for example, if you have uh, that number is zero, then you can just ignore sense ten, uh, the stereotype, the stereotype part completely. Okay. So they experimented with Vino bias data set and um, uh, they essentially, uh, of course, uh, tried to remove the sense ten uh, by uh, by completely toning it down. Right, so that's basically, uh, and then measuring the bias ratio. So the way they measured the bias ratio is basically by doing this. Uh, you have a particular prompt which is uh, related to a profession-oriented thing. For example, uh, you know, um, you can you can have a sentence like the uh, the nurse of this hospital uh, is is great, and then he or she. So you want to basically, uh, you know, uh, come up with a he or she pronoun, right? So you can actually measure the bias using this bias ratio. Higher values are essentially worse, lower values are better, right? So for an unbiased kind of a model, uh, an ideal model, it will be one, right? For uh, a typical transformer, it is 7.02. And then if you can actually remove, you can actually remove bias from a transformer as well. For example, you can actually take uh, EX uh, for he, EX for she, take that vector, take the difference vector and then project uh, E times the X of nurse, or for that matter, any profession. Uh, to the null space of this direction, or or basically partially remove it. So so when they did that with transformer, they were able to reduce the bias for the transformer. But for the backpack models, they were able to reduce the uh, uh, you know bias by a large amount when uh, removing sense ten completely, or uh, by actually toning it down uh, by doing these uh, um, you know by 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 actually uh, learning the optimal removal fraction uh, per profession, right? So they could do that uh, by you know bias reduction up to 65% as you observe uh, from 4.34 to 2.16. To okay. uh, this is an example to show what happens when you try to remove these things. So for example, if you have a fraction of one, which basically means the, the stereotype exists. So then if the sentence was when the nurse walked into the room and then you should predict or he or she. So well, uh, a biased backpack LM predicted she 
but then a completely unbiased one predicted he and then there is a optimal fraction 0.7 if you learn that then you know using using this kind of this kind of stuff if you learn that you observe that he and she are equally predicted leading to a approximate bias of 1 uh, and overall uh, in fact a bias of 2.16 of course, you can also do knowledge editing here. So you can actually edit sense vectors of a target word X. Um, so for example, if the target word X was MacBook and there was a particular sense vector which corresponds to Apple. So, you know, we essentially saw that sense number seven captures these proper noun associations. So for Apple, you know, maybe of a MacBook, the word MacBook, Apple essentially is indicated by sense number seven. So you take that sense and then you remove the associations with, let's say, Apple and replace them with associations with HP. Now for more details, look at the paper, but you can do that given that you have sense vectors capturing these senses independently, right? Um, so what this does is to basically take prompts like this, the MacBook is best known for, and then generating things related to Apple, it starts generating things related to HP. Right, so it basically starts things really, you know, generating things related to HP as if, you know, MacBook belonged to HP. Yeah, similarly, the MacBook didn't come into the picture until 2000 and when, you know, typically you would expect Apple to come up uh, in the next part of the phrase. But then, you know, now you start generating things in HP uh, uh, with, with HP in them, as you making the model sort of feel as if MacBook belonged to HP and so on. OK, so in this video, in summary, I talked about, uh, uh, you know, backpack LMs. So uh, when word to vec was introduced, it was uh, um, it was non-contextual in nature. You have just one vector per word. Can I learn one vector per sense of the word? And that is where backpack LMs play a role. They can have both lexic rich lex lexical structure and interventions while actually having strong contextual performance, both in a single model. Right? It can support knowledge editing. It can support mitigation of bias. It can also help you essentially do topic control generation. OK, so the core sense vectors, language model weights, everything is publicly available. Um, and that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Hope you like the video. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage.